progress. Okay, well, good evening. We're going to begin our study with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, we are so thankful for the Sabbath hours that will be coming soon. And um, we are so thankful for your Holy Spirit that speaks to us, that brings conviction and power in our lives um, so that we can be connected with you through thy son, Jesus. We just pray, Lord, as we study this evening, that you can give us clear minds, that you can help us to understand these things and correct any errors we may have in our thinking, and help me in, in this presentation, in a difficult topic. I, I pray, Lord, that um, you can be with each person with their particular needs. You know the struggles that we face living in this world of sin and the discouragements that we can experience at times. But help us to cling to you and to trust in your promises and to recognize that you have prepared a work in our heart and that you will complete that. And um, we give our hearts to you so that you can use us according to thy will. Be with us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> well, good evening. Now, the study that we're going to be doing, I'm, I'm still preparing my notes for the more detailed um, analysis of what the Great Reset itself is about. And um, so I'm hoping next weekend, which I'm going to have the Friday study and the Sabbath afternoon study, uh, that I'll have my notes ready for that. So that's kind of a goal that I have this week. I got distracted, you know, last week with the, uh, the study on uh, the Midnight Cry as being August 15th, 1844, and just there was lots of interesting things I learned uh, doing that. And then this movement in, in the studies that we've been going through over the last two weeks at least have been extremely profound in understanding the connection between um, the stories in the judges and also um, connected to that is understanding 9-11 and its connection to our time in Judges chapter 2. So I first want to review this idea and, and I'm going to go through some of these things. So it's we have these sort of disparate studies. I mean, studying judges um, definitely doesn't necessarily seem like we'd be studying Ezra chapter 7 to 10, uh, but those are connected. And, and our, our study that we had done with this chronology of <clears throat> uh, April 5th, 2030, and what it means as a symbol. Again, we're not predicting an event on that date. We're just looking at this as a symbol and how it ties into the history that this movement has already gone through um, in ways that it, it's going to take time going over this again and again before we really grasp it. It's, I mean, I'm, I'm spending a lot of time thinking about it, studying it. So for me, it, if I'm struggling, you know, trying to put all these things together, I can imagine how difficult it is for somebody listening so the more participation we, we have and the questions that people have, uh, and remember, there's if you ask a question, you're thinking of a question, you think, well, I don't want to ask that question. Well, somebody else might have that question, and so you need to ask it for them. Um, and so those are all questions are always really useful to clarify things. So, so that's what we're going to try to do here uh, this, this evening is, is get through some of this. Now, I really like to take my time. So we did some of this uh, last study that we did on this. So this would be um, on the Sabbath afternoon study. But I, I still want to go over it again. So, so some of the things I'm going to be reminding you of, but every time we go through these things, you'll start to see these connections in clearer ways. So the idea that we got from Judges chapter 2, it was just while we were doing a study, and I, and I didn't mention it till after the study had been recorded, and then we came back 
I can't remember which day it was, but we came back and then looked at it again um, uh, the following day. And, and we found that this, this really did make sense. But at first I just thought, you know, it's something kind of subjective. And, and the idea comes from Judges chapter 2, verse 1. An angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochum. Now, Bochum here is, is a reference to the weepers, but we believe this is actually Bethel. So the angel of the Lord is Christ, and he's going to come from Gilgal, and he's going to come to Bethel. And said, I made you go up out of Egypt, and I brought you unto the land which I swear unto your fathers, and said, I will never break my covenant with you. And, and I saw that there was... To me, there seemed to be a parallel to 9-11 with Revelation chapter 18, this mighty angel coming down. And so as we went through that chapter, I started to realize that there was a connection, and we're not going to go through that, but a connection between each of the verses and the years starting on 2001. So Judges 2 verse 1 is 2001. Judges 2 verse 2 represents 2002. Now, some of it is, is a little bit subjective in that I don't think that you necessarily have to take each year and find an event on that year that is clearly connected. But we can see the general idea. And some verses are definitely illustrating events in this movement that happened in those years. So, so this study, I mean, the question is, what does this have to do with 2030? Well, it has a lot, as you will see. And one of the, this is the connection between 2030 and 2001 and what is happening right now in this movement. So to me, it's, it's quite profound how all these things to gain together. So I'm not going to go through a study on Judges chapter 2, but I do want to point out that Judges chapter 2 goes to verse 23 only and this to me was very significant because we do have a prediction by colin that's tied chronologically to the year 2023 and when we when we started to really look at this one of the things we recognized in this other study i was doing dealing with ezra is that we can look at 9-11 is the first day of the first month. That is, that's how we understand this. So 9-11 is the first day of the first month as a symbol. That is, I'm going to go to the whiteboard here. So I'm going to try to do this stuff writing it out instead of using the PowerPoint. And, and the reason that I would do that is, one is you can, you can see things a little bit better. When I use the PowerPoint, things are unfolding. Well, they're already all there. And there's kind of a distraction. I'm going to set this up properly. And um, so I find that it, it definitely works better if I draw it out. Now, I could try to draw it on PowerPoint, but it's not going to be as, as good. So let's see how this lines up. Now, I'm also going to switch the microphone. And I sometimes get this wrong, but... It's just, I think it's better if when I'm up there that I'm using the microphone on the camera itself. But people can tell me what they think sounds better. Well, first you might want to switch your screen. Yeah, well, I have, to, yeah, I, I will. So that's the first thing I do is switch the screen there. So people should be able to see that. And I stop my share of the other. So you should be able to see that whiteboard pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to get rid of these things on the whiteboard, so. I already have much of what I'm going to draw out already on the whiteboard, but I'd rather draw it out and just deal with these things one at a time. Okay, so. One of the first things that um, we need to put in place just deals with 2030 itself. Now, we know that 2030 came from the week of Christ. 
It is we had Christ crucified in the midst of the week. And I put literal days um, marking the 10th day of the seventh month. The 10th day of the seventh month, because the 2300 days in the 70 weeks end on the 10th day of the seventh month. This, of course, is going to be the 14th day of the first month. So we can see that the cross isn't exactly in the center day wise from this literal number of days. And this ended up being September uh, 30th, 27 AD. This, of course, 31 AD being April 27th. And this being, um, I believe it was October 12th. Uh, 34 AD, it could be, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So, so these are the literal days, and, and this week of Christ is a symbol of the 2520. Symbolically, this is three and a half years and three and a half years, but literally, it's a longer period of time. But the main thing is that when we counted 1260 here, it came to November 15th, uh, 27 AD. And the thing about that is it's 46 days short. So we saw in the prophetic mirror, this symbol. And so we could put 19 days here and we could put, um, uh, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put years here. So this is gonna be September 11th to 27 AD. But then I could put years at the bottom. So in the prophetic mirror, with the two 1260s, there's four here. Um, so October 8th, and I guess this is actually important. October 8th is the end of this 1260. Um, so you can see this is uh, 1306 days, and this is 1264 days. So this is 2520 days plus 50 days, correct? <clears throat> now that's an inclusive count. If I just counted cardinally from, from here to here, from the 10th day of the seventh month, I would get uh, 2569 days, but I'm counting this as the first day in this as the 2570th day. Okay, so we we then could so that's just Mark. <laughs> so it's phoning me. Okay, so what what we do here is um, we're going to um I lost my train of thought. Oh, so we're going to say that this is 538. And instead of going this way, we're going this way because we can see the 1260. So this would be 1798. And this would be 1844. And this would be 1863. Is that clear to everyone what, what I'm doing there? I know, I know I've gone through this before. I'm sorry to tell you that I don't know how you got uh, the 10th day of the seventh month for when, when Stephen was stoned. I'm sure you must have told us, but I just can't bring it up. I can't recall it. Okay. So first we know that the 2300 days and the 70 weeks start on the 10th day of the seventh month. Right? Yeah. So that means... Uh -huh. They're going to end on the 10th day of the seventh month. So that okay. would be the first thing. The second thing is we see Christ standing on the right hand of God. Oh, yeah. So he's yeah. closing the So that would indicate a day of atonement. So we don't have an Thanks. explicit statement. But even, but but we would have to, with those two pieces of information, uh, suggest that it's going to be the tenth day of the seventh month. 
Okay, so that, that helps? Yes, it does a great deal, thank you. Okay, that was a good question. Now, I'm not gonna deal with this past year, I'm gonna deal with this future. So we can see days are going this way, years are going this way. Now we had already come to understand from 1863, if we count um, 12, uh, 126 days for 126 years, we'd come to 1989. And then we also, so I'm just gonna draw this here. So we have here 1863, and we're gonna count 126 days, and that brings us to 1989. And then we, we understood that we could also go from 1888, 126 days, 126 days here, to 2014. And this period of time here then would be 151, which is counting the number of shekels um, with uh, 60, um, 60 shekels per manna, right? So you're gonna get that symbol there. So we add this here, but I noticed that I could continue counting the years. And the confirmation of that had to do with 2017. So somebody's mic is on. Um, I'll turn that off for them, okay. <clears throat> and what I did was something that I took from Stephen, where you have October 22, 1844, and we count the number of days back here by 1844 times 360. And if I do that, it brings me to this date here, 2017. And, and there's more to it, but the significance here had to do with the connection between 2014 and 2017 and the understanding of Samuel Snow's letters. So I'm not going to go into detail here on that. But that number of days brought me to this date. And from that, I then was able to make a prediction about April 8th, 2019. So put 2019 down here. And which would be the portrayal of Judas because this would be the 12th day of the first month. And so I could con continue counting this. This would be um, the 14th, did I do this right? Yeah, pardon me. This one goes up to here to 2014. That's what it does, it goes to 2014 as being 1844 times 360. And then I could connect this to the 14th day of the first month so this would have been the 17th day of the first month. There we go. That's what happened. So this, this comes and confirms this 2014 date. Um, and then we have this date, which I had already marked as dealing with uh, Passover back in 2017 when I was doing Samuel Snow's letters. And then 2019, in 2018, I made a prediction about that, which did come true, just not in the way that I expected, uh, because that's Judas's betrayal. That's the day Jeff resigns. And then you're going to have, we could just keep counting these days back. So I'm not going to go into detail of all of them. But if I went to 2030, that would end up being the first day of the first month. And so when I first did this, I thought, well, this is kind of interesting, but we're not making any dates way off in the future like that. So I just kind of ignored it. So that's where I first found the first day of the first month in 2030, being April 5th, 2030. So that's, so that's way back in uh, 2018, in the summer of 2018, before we actually even started time setting, uh, I had created this week of Christ and then I developed this as we started uh, understanding time so that's why i got to that date okay so so we have this date april 5th 2030 but 
we're not predicting anything, we're just using it as a symbolic date. But it gives us some information that we then can look at what we've been studying and understand more fully what 2030 means to this movement, this, the events that are being predicted, this Great Reset, the World Economic Forum, um, what's happened with the pandemic, all these types of things, how they're all tied together. And, and what it means to this movement, how this movement should be looking at these things um, at, at the present time, how we should relate to what's happening around us. But the key here is that we have this chronology. So this chronology becomes important. Now, um, so the next step in here, so, so we understand this now. We have some interesting dates here, which we will see showing up again. <clears throat> but the big next step was simply, I had come to understand even long before this, that 2300 months is exactly 186 years. And when I say exactly, to the day, not to the minute or the second, and this would be biblical years. That is, if I start on a biblical date, and, and it can vary because there's sometimes spans of years uh, can vary in the biblical calendar. But generally, you're going to find that if I start on like the first day of the first month, 186 years later, I'll end up on the first day of the first month. Or more specifically, if I go to the end of this, the span of time between these is 2300 months, which is 67,920 days. So it's it's a long period of time. And, and I knew about this, I don't know, for a few years. Uh, I just had never done anything with it. So it wasn't, it wasn't, um, uh, to me, it was just this symbol. And, and of course, the importance here of this symbol is when we go from the first day of the first month to the 10th day of the seventh month, it's 186 days, right? So, so this obviously, the fact that 2300 years is going to be addressed in this way, um, based on 2300 days, well, this is now just 2300 months, a day for a month, instead of a day for a year gives us this symbol of the span of time between the first day of the first month and the 10th day of the seventh month. So it would be at the least a witness that the 2300 days are connected with a prediction regarding the 10th day of the seventh month. And we know that Miller, so somebody have a question. I hear somebody's, somebody's mic's on. So make sure you turn off your mics unless you have a question or comment. So the 2300 days obviously end here for Miller. Yeah, so again. And, but for snow, the 2300 days end here. Right? So they have this difference of 186 days between their two um predictions if we want to put it that way and that makes sense to people right now this is 187 days inclusive right so the first day of the first month is the first day of the jewish year the 10th day of the seventh month is the 187th day so it's also a symbol of july 18th and and samuel snow his july 18th letter of course symbolizes this period of time so he never understood it that way. <clears throat> now, what I can do then is I can, and I'd done this a couple of months ago. So I just started on the first day of the first month in 1844. So this is 1844. So I'm just taking that and putting it here to the 10th day of the seventh month. And I could do this, the first day of the first month and the 10th day of the seventh month. 10th day, seventh month in 2030. And 
This is going to be, of course, April 5th, and this is going to be October 8th. That is, this is 186 days, and this is 186 days, April 19th, and October 22. So then we have this 2300 months, and we also have 2300 months. Now, the thing about that is, why would I start here to count the 2300 months or the 186 years? Instead of starting at October 22nd, why would I prefer this over this? Because I could have said, well, the 2300 days ended here. I'm now going to count 2300 months. So what would be my reasoning to start on the first day of the first month and ending on the first day of the first month? rather than starting on the 10th day of the seventh month and ending on the 10th day. Why would I do that? Symmetry? Well, it's nothing to do with symmetry that I can think of. I mean, this is just as symmetrical starting on the 10th day of the seventh month and ending there. But I, I, I didn't, I didn't, even though I had drawn this out, I can't remember how long ago, it'd be a couple of months ago. Um, I didn't, I didn't mark October 8th, 2030. I've always been talking about April 5th, 2030, um, focused on that. And that, that would be the simple reason is this is 186 days. Wouldn't I count 186 years from the same point? Does, does that make sense? I'm thinking. Yeah. So 186 days. And I'm just saying, well, no, we're going to do, instead of from the first day of the first month, we're going to count 186 years. Because that's where I start counting 186. But what I didn't realize that is if I go here and I count this, well, I still have 186 days that I can count, correct? That is, this doesn't bring me to the, the 10th day of the seventh month. It only brings me to the first day of the first month. And, and if I was really thinking, I wanna to get to the 10th day of the seventh month. So all I'm doing is I'm now taking this period of time here and I'm putting in between the 186 and the first day of the first month, I'm putting in this 2300 months. So, so this is correct. I mean, this is what I should have thought of when I first looked at it. But now I have another witness to this, which we're going to look at. And why this date of October 8th, 2030 is connected to this first day of the first month. So this this is gonna it's gonna take a little bit to sort of get this in people's minds, but we can see that these days can represent years, and there they are, right? Now we don't normally count then from here, but really what I'm doing is is I'm not really counting that. I'm really just counting 186 days, which is now years and then adding the 186, because I ended up on the first day of the first month, I still need the 186 days to get me to the 10th day of the seventh month. Because here, this brings me to the 10th day of the seventh month. Does that make sense to people? The sort of reasoning here of why I need the 10th day of the seventh month in this line. It is still logically symmetrical. Okay, yeah, it is. But that wasn't the reason I did, I counted from here though, right? So I didn't start from here and think that that, because I wasn't doing this. I wasn't considering that really, even though I did draw it. 
I was just concerned about the first day of the first month. Now this became significant uh, because of a number of reasons, but one of the things that I had always noted that in 457 BC, we have this, this story of Ezra leaving Jerus Babylon and going to Jerusalem. And he begins on the first day of the first month. After three days at the river Ahava, they leave on the 12th day of the first month. And then they arrive at uh, Jerusalem on the fifth day of the fourth month, or pardon me, the first day of the fifth month. And then three days later, they bring the gold and silver that they had parted here, divided among the priests, they deliver that to the temple. And then you're going to have the 20th day of the ninth month. And that's going to be after a period of three days, right? So we get the 10th day of the seventh month is exactly center of that. Ezra doesn't give us this date, but this is the to build that's talked about. This is the return of the people, restore in the King James, but it's the word shuv in Hebrew. And this is the going forth of the commandment. So this is a three step, one, two, three. And we have this chiasm with the 10th day of the seventh month in the center. But that's not the end of the story because after they go and repent here about the marriage to the strange wives, 11 days later on the first day of the 10th month, they're gonna begin a series of divorce proceedings that they're going to do this according to the law so that the, the women, the strange wives who have been married to Jewish men, they're going to receive a just compensation so they will be cared for and their children. So this, this is a process of time and it's going to occur 88 days and end on the first day of the first month. So I don't know if you can see that over there. And I'll put this up here. So we can see the story of Ezra begins on the first day of the first month and ends on the first day of the first month. And so to me, that was very interesting because this 2300 months is going to bring us from the first day of the first month to the first day of the first month over a period of 186 years. Now, we had also, and we're going to look at these dates, but when we go into our time and we go to April 5th, 2030, we, can we, we found that we could take these days and make them months because that's what we did here. We have a day for a month, right? And so I could use a day for a month as a symbol and find that 88 months is 2,640 days and 11 months is 330 days. Here I'm using the the symbol, the, the symbolic month of 30 days, right? So I'm not using a 29.530587 month in this case. I'm just saying it's 30 days, right? But this, this became significant because um, of its connection. So when we counted back from April 5th, 2030, and we, we took this as literal time, right? So really, a, this doesn't go here, this goes here. So I've, I've put this 2,640 days. This is going to bring me to uh, January uh, 12th. And if I'm counting uh, from, uh, if I'm counting this January 12th, this is January 11th and 12th, or 11th to 12th. It's the dividing point between the end of January 11th and the beginning of January 12th to the beginning of April 5th, 2030. And this is in the year 2023. So this is where Collins' prediction has this 65 days from the election on November 8th which is an inclusive count. That means it includes all of November 8th and all of January 11th. Right? So, so this period here becomes significant in that 
I'm marking January 11th. Now I'm going to get rid of this here. Just use that for illustrations. And then I could count these 11 months, this 330 days. And this brought us back to February 16th, 2022. This is a date that is past. Now the significance here, we, we, we did, haven't really delved into it too much. But this marks something in our movement, and it marks a point in which uh, the Canadian group sends out an email. This was an email sent out on a Wednesday. And, and the previous week, as they had been doing for a long time, ever since these studies had begun, they would include my Zoom link. But on that date is the first time they discontinued doing that. So on February 16th, because of the controversy between me and Colin and a perceived um, animosity, um, they decided no longer to give my Zoom link. And so that's on February 16th, 2022. So we can see this is the 11 months and this is the 88 days or 88 months. So the 88 days and the 11 days become 11 months and 88 months. And they bring us back to this history here with February 16th, which is a symbol, Samuel Snow's first letter. When it's written, it's, it's also 216, which is six times six times six, has lots of different qualities and shows up again and again in our lines. So, so this seems significant to what we were studying about what God is showing us that we, our responsibility is, that the division that could result in this movement if we were to act as we always have acted, God is giving us this opportunity for that division to cease so that we can become united in our message. And that means a personal conversion. This is not about other people who are wrong. This is about us being truly converted, focusing on ourselves instead of upon others as the cause of division. So, so the message here is not an attack on anyone except ourselves, because we are the ones who are responsible for our own actions. And other people are responsible for their actions, but we can't do anything about their actions. We can only do what we're responsible to. <clears throat> now, from this, um, we also notice, so I'm going to come back to Judges chapter 2. And then we notice something. So in Judges 2, we, we have this period of time, 9-11. Now, 9-11 is the first day of the first month as a symbol. First day. And, and simply, Jeff would do this. You have 9-11. That's the first day of the first month, first day, first month. And then you're going to have the Sunday law. That's going to be the 10th day of the seventh month, right? And then you're going to have the fifth day of the fourth month. And that's going to be midnight, right? And then you're going to have the first day of the fifth month. And that's the midnight cry. And this is the first day of the first month and the first day of the fifth month. That's what, what chapter and verse in the Bible. Ezra 7, 9, ain't it? Okay, so this is Ezra 7, 9. But remember, Ezra 7, 9 doesn't end at the 10th day of the seventh month, does it? No, it doesn't. Right. It brings us to the first day of the first month. And in Adventist history, we don't go to the first day of the first month over here. Do we? Nope. No. But we can see that these 2,300 months or 186 years bring us to the first day of the first month. That is, it connects Millerite history and the story of Ezra to our time which we already understand we're repeating Millerite history and we're repeating the story of Ezra and we're repeating Ezekiel and we're repeating lots of different things because it's the effect of every vision. 
all of the histories of the past are illustrating our time. And our movement is going through a typical line that's tying us back to the past. So, of course, this is correct. You know, October 22nd, 1844, in order for any of this to mean anything, we have to establish this. Now, there is a, a Korean guy named um, uh, Daniel Kim, who I've been talking to through Messenger, you know, probably since 2004, I believe. And, and he notices some of these things, but he rejects Millerite history. That is, he rejects the midnight cry. And, and he just can't, he does count these 2300 months from 1844, but he's going to start on March 21st because he doesn't believe Snow's chronology. So, so he also has this uh, 2300 months as 186 years. And so he's going to end on, in his mind, you know, March, uh, I think it's, I can't remember the date he starts on. I think it's like March 21st or something like that. Um, but anyway, he uses the same idea. But the thing about all of the things that we know to be true is that they must be established upon things that are understood and accepted as true. That is, we build upon a foundation. We don't just reject something. We don't reject our understanding of 9-11 or reject our understanding of 18, October 22nd, 1844, or anything like that in any of the things that we are doing. That is, if we were rejecting things that were established, then we would be going off the path into darkness. Because Ellen White says the light of the midnight cry shines all along the path. And if you reject the midnight cry, you might have some things that are true, like Daniel Kim recognizes that 2,300 uh, months is 186 years and puts it from 1844. He marks where Miller's prophecy ends, which he thinks is March 21st. And, and that's where he's going to stop. And then he's going to be predicting literal day for year prophecies in the future. He's going to have, you know, the second coming happening on that time. All, all those types of things. So, so we're not doing anything like that. And we're not even saying that something's going to happen in 2030. That is, we just understand this as a symbol because it's more speaking to us presently about our duty than about something in the future. And that's sometimes a hard thing for people to take because they just see a date in the future and they can't understand that a date might be symbolic, even if the world doesn't go on long enough for that date to occur. And I've done this in the past with other dates in the future um, on the Mayan calendar, for instance. You know, it's going to end October 13th, like, you know, whatever the year is, 4157. I can't remember the year. Sometime way in the future, or, you know, it, you're going to have the Mayan calendar end. But it ends on a symbolic date. So I'm not arguing that, you know, Jesus is going to come back at the end of the Mayan calendar. That'd be silly. But... When we have a date in the future, we can at least understand it symbolically. Now, if we go from the first day of the first month in 457 BC, no, just, so we're gonna get rid of this again. So if you start on the first day of the first month here in 457, and you get to the first day of the first month here, you're going to have months of 30 and 29 days. And the year is going to be 354 days in length. That is, from the first day of the first month to the last day of the year, which is going to be the 12th day of the 30th month, it's going to be 354 days all told, right? I mean, it, this would be 355 days when you get to the next year. But this day contains 354 days, or this year contains 354 days. So we started to consider something about uh, our lines here. 
So instead of going back here to 1844, so I'm just going to get rid of all this. We already know that 9-11 symbolizes the first day of the first month. Now, I know this is going to take a little bit of, of thinking here, but here we have 9-11. So this is September 11th, 2001, right? That's, that's the date. And I noticed, well, we were counting here days for months, right? So what if we started here and we counted backwards? You know, we, we could do that. We could count, well, we're just gonna keep counting 30 days. Or, well, when we did the 2300 months, we were counting lunar months, not biblical months, right? Not, or not prophetic months. We we're counting the actual months that we see the moon, 2300 months of, of actually, you know, new moons. So, so the question is, if we start here, 9-11 is the first day of the first month, then we should be able to count over to here, this as the first day of the first month, but this being 457 BC. That is, 457 BC would line up with this period of time from September 11th here to April 5th, 2030. Now, April 5th, 2030, on the biblical calendar, on the, the actual lunar calendar, this is actually the first day of the first month based upon the moon. Well, 9-11 happens on the, the 20th, uh, 21st day of the sixth month. So it doesn't happen on a first day of a month, right? Even on our calendar, it's, it's the 11th of September. It's not the 1st of September. But if, if I'm going to count months and I was going to do lunar months, I would have from here to here, from here to August 22nd, August 22nd being the first day of the sixth month, Right, so September 11th is going to be the 21st day of the sixth month. So August 22 is the first day of the sixth month. And if I counted these number of months here, all the way up to here, this is going to be 354 months to the day. So from August 22nd, not from September 11th, but from August 22nd, September 11th is going to happen in that first month, right? in that sixth month but this is going to be in this from the sixth month to the start of the first month and you know it's it's it still gives us this 354 months so it does connect september 11th to 2030. so so that's significant but i, I noticed something i noticed well we're using lunar months what if i continued using these 30 day months. So if I started on September 11th, and I'm gonna count 340, 354 months, I will get um, 10,620 days. Now this period of time here was um, 10,400 and can't remember the exact number. I think like 54 days or something like that. Um, 10,454 days. I think that's what it is. If I count from here to there, something like that. Um, maybe that's going from August 22nd. But if I count 30 days and I start here on the first day of the first month as being September 11th. So I'm going to start on September 11th. 2001, and I'm going to count this many days. Now that I'm counting those days inclusively, so this is the first day of the first month. Where do you think I'm going to come to? I'm obviously going to be longer than April 5th, so I'm starting here on September 11th. What date do you think I'm going to come to with 354 30 day months, 10,620 days? 
So I'm going to go past April 5th, but how many days do you think I'm going to go past April 5th if I start here as this being the first day of the first month? By 186? Yeah, so it's going to be 186 days, so it ends up on October 8th, 2030. So you can see my initial sort of rejection is kind of a strong word, but just not considering so much this 186 days here going to October 8th, the 10th day of the seventh month as being connected to Millerite history. I can see that it's connected to September 11th, 2001. So this ties September 11th, 2001 inextricably with April 19th, 1844. Can we see that? And the witness has to do with all these things that I've shown you, the 186 years, the 2300 months, the connection to the story of Ezra. I know we're going to have to go over this again and again till people could see it. But can we see that this is extremely significant? Can people agree with me on this? It looks to hold a lot of weight. Yeah, and that's an understatement, really. That is, what we see here is something phenomenal, as far as I'm concerned. It's as profound as anything I've ever seen before. Now, I know not everybody sees everything that I see, right, because I spent more time on it, and it might just be sketchy in your mind. Um, and, and, and I'm obviously going to have to write a paper on it and, and give you notes on it as well so that this is all written out. And I have drawn diagrams and charts and things. But what we can see is that September 11th, if it's the first day of the first month, and this history here is representing not just the story of Ezra, but also the story of Millerite history, it's telling us that that 186 days from April 19 to October 22 needs to be answered if we're going to take the story of Ezra. Because what Ezra is going to do is it's going to give us the starting point of this, 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 this period of time of that year of 457 BC and then an ending point, but Ezra isn't the end. Mill Millerite history brings us to the 10th day of the seventh month, but it doesn't go to the first day of the first month. So Ezra gives us this. It doesn't explicitly tell us about the 10th day of the seventh month, but we can then infer it because of the structure of that year. But then we can also see from Millerite history, 2300 months is going to give us this history and that 186 days still needs to be added on to that April 5th, 2030 date to get to October 8th. Then we have a complete structure. That is, we've now connected Ezra, Millerite history, and our history in this structure. Now, I understand, you know, for many people, they would look at this and say, well, you're predicting 2030. And, and and it doesn't really matter. I mean, Christ can come back at any time. He's, he's not bound by some structure that we create. But he is speaking about our history because we can see that this is telling us about our history here, that it, it in some ways symbolically is connected to Millerite history. And, and we know that our line is typical. That is, our line is not about external events. It's about internal events within this movement. And even though we have external dates, elections, things like that, um, sieges of Washington, D.C., all those types of things connected with our structure, we're not predicting those events. We can see when they pass that they have a significance. They bear witness to the structure of our lives, but they're giving us a message, and that message is about what God wants us to do. And so if somebody was just to take this and say, well, Theodorus predict, 
predicting, you know, Jesus is coming back in 2030. One is they'd be incorrect, but they'd be not understanding why, what our lines mean. And that's why when I took Colin's lines and I saw the structure of, of, of the elections and Trump and Biden, I accepted that structure, even if what we, we might infer is going to happen doesn't occur. And actually, we can be quite certain we can't predict it external events. We've been shown this again and again. We have a really poor track record when it comes to putting a date in the future and attaching an event to it. And the Millerites made that mistake where they continued to try to set dates. And that's not what we're supposed to do. So this is not about setting dates. I'm opposed to time setting as much as I ever have been. So what we have is a structure that's symbolic and meaningful. If those dates happen to pass, then we might know something about it. But it's not so much about what's happening in the future. It's about what's happening now. And that we can take our story, we can put it on a line, and we can see that God is speaking to us at the present time. Because he's not speaking to us in the future. He's always speaking to us now. Now, it doesn't mean that, that um, you know, because we have these future dates and maybe date could mean something as far as events, but it would be foolish to try to mark an event just because we have a date, even if that date is something that's, you know, already established, you know, like the date of an election. Well, we can say, well, that, that date can go on our line. It's an actual event that's going to happen. The question is, what does it mean? And it only has significance as it witnesses to what has already been established. Right, so these structures, I know they, they can be complex. It's, you're not gonna remember all of these numbers, but you should be able to reconstruct them. Even if, even if you have to look at, at, at the videos again or look at notes that I'm gonna send, you should be able to, to draw these out. So, so to me, there's, there's a bunch of things, and, and, and this is just the basic outline. There's way more details here that I'm, I'm not going to get into today because one is they would just detract, detract from what we're actually trying to see here. So we see that Millerite history, this period from the first day of the first month to the first day of the first month, is witnessing to our history. It establishes September 11th as the first day of the first month. And it ties to what we saw in Judges chapter 2. That is, in Judges chapter 2, we went from September 11th, we went from the year 2001 to the year 2023. And here on this line, it witnesses to 2023. It's starting a symbolic period of 264 days, 260. 2,640 days. 264 is the symbol of the prediction of July 18th because it was the 26th day of the fourth month. And 88 is a symbol of 2 Chronicles chapter 29 and 30, which Jeff was presenting at that camp meeting back in 2018 when we were coming to understand these periods of time. And he was never able to present it until after we had the July 18th prediction, then he found the significance of what the key to present it. So we know that that 2,640 days as a symbol is connected to these 88 days or 88 months as a symbol. So um, I don't know. Well, I'm going to show you this on the PowerPoint, what I've drawn out, and just kind of review it. Okay, so I've just got to switch my microphone and do it without cutting off the sound. So you can hear me still? 
Yep. Yes. Okay, good. Sometimes I hit the wrong, wrong one. Okay, so um, any any questions? It, does it seem clear to people, even if you couldn't just reproduce it right now? Does it seem clear to people how this fits together? I'm going to go back to your, to the Bible. <clears throat> now, some, some people may not be totally familiar with everything that happens in the story of Ezra as they go from Babylon to Jerusalem and about the divorce divorces that occur there. Uh, but that's, that's what's been given. That power was given to them in Artaxerxes' decree. Um, but here in Judges, so I'm just going to... You know, so we, we take this period of time, and so Judges chapter 2 witnesses to this movement up to 2023. So even though we have this date 2030, Judges is not witnessing anything about this movement beyond the year 2023. If we take that these verses represent the years in the 21st century. So, and we looked at this in a study, so anybody can go back and watch those studies. Now, we also came to understand, and we're just in the process in our morning studies, realizing that the judges represent messages in this movement and in response to uh, errors that this movement holds, or not necessarily holds, but affect the movement. So that means some people in the movement hold. These is the, the, the nations that, we didn't ch chase out that God has left for us, um, and he's left them there for the reason of testing us or proving us. And so this movement has to address those things. Those are things that are internal within us as individuals. And um, so, so Judges is opening up all of these things, uh, dealing with this history of this movement. So we can see that Judges chapter 2 is addressing this movement up to the year 2023 which is, I think, quite profound. Now, um, I'm just going to show you my PowerPoints here that I have. Now, these maybe aren't as easy to see for some people, depending on what kind of device you're watching these studies on. But here I just have this uh, 186 years from the first day of the first month in 1844 to April 5th, 2030, and which I got as April 5th in the week of Christ. And we can see Snows and Millers, the end of their prophetic periods. And we can see that also this 186 years, if put into prophetic time, that is, when we multiplied Genesis chapter 12, 15, 17, and 22, which revealed the covenant given to Abraham, we multiplied those numbers together. We got this number 67,320. 67,320 divided by 360 is 187 prophetic years. So it's a symbol of July 18th. But the difference between that number and the 186 years or 2300 months is 600 days. And 600 days is 20 prophetic months. So this period of time here can also be expressed as a symbol for July 18, 2020. 87 years and 20 prophetic months. All, both prophetic time. And then you can see I have up here this 186 years, which I could go from the 10th day of the seventh month to October 8th. But you can see it's probably not really needed. Just put it up there. We can see the 186 days and the 186 days. So this becomes significant as a symbol in that it's pointing to something uh, that we understand happens in Millerite history. So, so we don't know what it all means, but we can know what it means to us as far as this message. That God is witnessing to us that we need to, to understand the time that we're in, and these symbols and structures give us an understanding of that. Now, um, here I've done something else. Now, this is going to be pretty hard for some people to see. It's kind of tiny. 
But again, I have this August 22nd, 2001, which is going to start a, a period of 354 months in which 9-11 occurs in that first month. And, and then I have these dates here, March 7th, 2011. That's going to be the first day of the fifth month. Now, what is March 7th a symbol of? Sunday law. The Sunday law, right? And then, <clears throat> and then I'm going to come to the 10th day of the seventh month. Now, the symbol there is October 3rd, 2016. Now, that's the beginning of a month of 29 and a half days. So, I mean, they alternate 29 and 30 days. Um, so that would end on November, um, I think November 1st or November 2nd. I think in this case it was a November 2nd. So that, or maybe November 1st is the last day of that year. So now that period of time in 2016, uh, it's just prior to the camp meeting in 2016. So the camp meeting, um, I know I'm going to be at that camp meeting on the 14th. I'm going to record a presentation that's that's not going to survive, and I have to re-record it on the 16th. But but anyway, I'm there at that camp meeting in 2016. So that's just before it. So it it represents that month in which that camp meeting occurs. So, so that's kind of significant there, but, but over on this side here, I'm counting back from April 5th periods of 30 day months. So it's, it's, it's not, it's not a complete picture. So what I did is I, I, I put these third, this year of, whoops, this year here. So this is the first day of the first month in 457 BC going to the first day of the first month in 456 BC. And, and I put the months there. I gave them the biblical names, Nisan, Iyar, Savan, Tammuz, Av, Elu, El, Elul, Tishri, Heshvan, Kislev, Tevet, Shevet, and Adar. And in that year, there is only 12 months. And the months are going to go 30, 29, 30, 29, 30, 29, 30, 29, 30, 29, 29, and 30. So just the way that those lunar months ended up being in 457 BC is such that you get 354 days for the entire year. And up on the top, I have the 12th day of the first month, the sixth day of the third month. That's the center of the chiasm here. There's the three days on either side here, which I didn't draw in. And then you have um, the 10th day of the seventh month, which is the center of the first day of the first month and the 20th day of the ninth month. I also put here the 15th of Heshvan, so the 15th day of the 8th month. And the 15th day of the 8th month, uh, I didn't put a date there. I was going to. Um, but that's, that's the symbol uh, of the rebellion in 977 BC when we have um, jo Jeroboam offering the, at the, uh, on the altar in, in Bethel in front of the golden calf there. And then we have the prophecy of Josiah. So I'd, I'd placed it there. So obviously that doesn't happen here in 457 BC, but there is a chiasm between the 20th day of the ninth month and the 10th day of the seventh month. That date lies exactly in the center. So it's just another chiasm within that history. And, and I believe it symbolizes things uh, after October 22nd, 1844. But uh, we'll, we'll deal with that later in some other study. And then we have the divorcement. So they come on the 20th day of the ninth month. They confess their sins. And, and we can see here what I have is when I start on September 11th and I count 30-day months, uh, the first month will go from September 11th and end on October 10th. So October 11th is going to be uh, the first day of the second day. The, the second day is going to represent be represented by that period of 30 days. So as you move from September 11th, you're going to have these months. And so I just put the months that started or are marked here. So on the first day of the first month, that's going to mark May 22 to June 20th, 2011, for instance. Not, not really anything significant there. I just put it there because it's lining up. Uh, December 21st, 2016 to January 19th, 2017. 
well, this is going to be where the month in which the mind calendar is. Uh, oh no, that's not the one. This is. Um, can't remember what this is significant 2016 December 21st um, oh it just has that mind calendar date December 21st that's why um, and then you have the first day of the 10th month this is going to be that one uh, that we had counted um, this other way that was January 11th 2023 but this is going to be uh, July 18th to August 16th 2023 so we have the symbol of July 18th here. And then you're going to have, it's going to end. Now, the first day of the first month is going to be the 10th day of the seventh month. Um, so these are the, these are actually 30-day months, all of these. Right? These aren't 29, 30. So, so this is going to be that last month starts on September 9th to October 8th, 2030. But it's... October 8th, 2030 is the 10th day of the seventh month. So I know some of this can be a bit confusing. Now, if I count back from April 5th as the first day of the first month, it brings me to April 6th, or, or actually March 7th, 2001. Again, we have that symbol of the Sunday law. So there's something about these structures. So I, I probably didn't, shouldn't really try to confuse people too much, except to say these are the ones where we're counting uh, the 2,640 days back to January 12th, the margin between the 11th and the 12th, that's going to be that month. And then if we count back to this history, June 17th to July 16th, July 16th, 2016 is my presentation at the School of the Prophets on Sabbath, um, where I present Ezekiel and the 391 and a half days. So two years before we even start thinking about uh, setting dates at all. And then, of course, yeah, July 18th, back on the first day of the fifth month as a symbol. So, so there's still more to be understood about this. The main thing that we can see is that we can count this year, the first day of the first month to the first day of the first month, as symbolizing the period from April 19th to April 5th, 2030. So April 19th, 1844. But it can also symbolize period from, from the years 2001 to the year 2030 and different dates within those years, depending where we start. And that means that this history of the story of Ezra is illustrating the history of this movement from September 11th to 2030, but more specifically to this place where the divorces begin. As you can see here, July 18th, 2023, as a symbol. Or if we go back from April 5th, the end of Colin's prediction, January 12th, 2023. So, so these these both give us information that connects us to symbols that occur within our history. You know, what that, what's that going to mean? Like, I'm not predicting something on July 18th, 2023 again. I'm just saying that it points to this symbol. The dates become the symbols. And maybe there might be something that witnesses to, to events, something in the, or to our movement, some event. But, but we can never say what that would be. And what we're, what we're moving towards is not a division within the movement, but a unity to occur within the movement. So this movement has, in, in a lot of this structure, we're going to see that there's messages that are illustrated, uh, but also what's being illustrated is uh, the problems that this movement has had in how we have dealt with those who differ from us. And we have not been following the counsel that the spirit of prophecy gave us that when a brother differ, are you to call him a heretic? Yeah. 
No. Are we going to misrepresent his views to others? I mean, maybe he's teaching deadly heresy, maybe. And, and we think our responsibility is to then point out that this person is de teaching error. What's the problem with that, that thought process? His, his teaching should be examined uh, according to the word of God, according, according to the spirit of prophecy, carefully and prayerfully and patiently examined. Right. Or these judgments flare out. Because we may not understand his points, that he may have light that we need. And to just misrepresent his position to others, that's, that's not honest. It doesn't benefit the truth in any manner. And also, if he is teaching error, are we not to try to win him over? Yes. Yeah. So I don't think cutting people off or misrepresenting them or calling them heretics um, is redemptive. In the vast majority of times, you're going to be driving that person away from the truth instead of drawing him to the truth. But also, you may be in error, so that's another important point. You may need to be corrected. God may be giving you uh, light, and he may give light to somebody that you find very annoying, that you don't even like. And God may give that person light, and you're going to just reject it because you don't like that person. It's not very wise. And, and the reason, why does God give light to somebody sometimes that you don't like. Why wouldn't he just give light to your friends? It's a test. What's that? A test? Yes, it's a test. Okay, and it's a test. And and, and it's a test that 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 is also correcting something in us, right? Because if I don't like somebody, and that's a brother who God is giving light to, doesn't that mean there's something in me that's a problem that I need to correct? And, and I've had this experience many times. That, Because, you know, I can find some people quite annoying believe it or not, especially when people are um, not going to necessarily try to tell you what I find annoying, but, um, but when people are not paying attention to all of the details in something and don't appear to be interested in looking at that, that can annoy me, right? Because that person's different than I am. I'm going to look at all of the details. And so when there are people that don't do that, I can find it annoying. It doesn't mean that person's a bad person. They're just a different personality than me. They approach things differently. But sometimes God will give me that person to present something that I need to see. And, and the fact that it comes in that way means that God cares about my character. He's not just concerned about giving me information. He's concerned about transforming my character. So I think we have to listen to people that we sometimes disagree with. And, and sometimes, as we've said before, if it is an error, sometimes Satan mixes truth and error together. And he uses sometimes an error that he wants to bury, I mean a truth that he wants to bury, he mixes it with error so that we won't look at that truth. And so we have to be careful. Somebody presents something, we can just be dismissive. 
oh, that's time setting or whatever the thing is that we don't like and, and you know, call him out as a heretic, tell all our friends to avoid him, make sure that people defriend him on Facebook, you know, never watch his videos, never read his papers. We've had that done to us, right? We've all experienced that in, in, in being in this movement and how church members have and churches have treated us. And yet we will do the same thing to others. And, and it's somebody who believes so much like us in many ways, but we don't really like them. And, you know, maybe them presenting something while well, we have some ideas about what that person's really like. And, and, you know, why is God showing this person light, not me? Jealousies can arise, all kinds of things. So God wants us to change. And so he, he sometimes brings light in a way that we don't expect. And so we have to be willing to examine those things. And, and that's why we examined um, Ralph Meyer's study on, on the popes in our study on uh, um, the presidency of the United States, why we spent time looking at Odilio's material in various studies, why we spent so much time looking at Collins information because you know there are some differences there but it, it's not fair to yourself or to the other person to just dismiss their stuff because there's some things you don't agree with about it because there may be light there and and much of this wouldn't have meant anything if we hadn't have taken the time to study Odilio's material and Ralph Meyer's material and Collins material and, and listen to what people have to say and, and try to understand it, try to get it correct. Doesn't mean we always fully understand and that we don't all, we always represent it correctly. Um, but we have to strive to do that. And we definitely don't call the person out as a heretic just because they disagree with us or we disagree with them or whatever it is or they maybe even have treated us badly or something like that. We're examining the truth. It doesn't matter where it comes from. And it doesn't matter about our personal feelings. The truth doesn't really care about our feelings. The truth is just an objective fact. It doesn't matter where, where it comes from. So, so I believe that this movement is coming to understand this in a real way. And whatever, you know, these dates in the future mean, those, that's not really important. What matters is what they mean to us now, what they're showing us now about ourselves. Um, Isaiah 53, 3, Angela wants us to look and at. Actually, from 1 to 3, I mean, I know oh, it's specific talking about Christ, but I mean, it's also speaking about anybody who's trying to teach the truth. People don't want to receive it and they turn mm -hmm. from him because they're repelled by his appearance or his mannerisms or whatever the problem is. Yeah, so Christ, we know that, you know, Isaiah 53, verse 1, who hath believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. And as a root out of dry ground, he hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. And he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Now, of course, this is Christ, so this isn't talking about us. But we can see how people rejected Christ not for good reasons, that's for sure. He, he had the truth, but he didn't meet their expectations. And, and we can see that in this movement. I mean, if we look at ourselves, honestly look at ourselves, I mean, we know um, we have problems. You know, for instance, I can be a jerk sometimes. That doesn't mean I'm excusing that and saying that it's not important. What I am saying, though, is... Um, I can come across as a jerk. I can be focused on information. I don't quite know how to deal with people's emotions. I try to be as diplomatic as I can. 
but I'm not always going to please everyone. And it's not because I'm uncaring and unconcerned. It's just because I'm a human being. I can't communicate everything perfectly. But we're also human. All of us are human beings. And we have the, the ability to misunderstand and misinterpret who somebody is or what they're saying. And, and we have to be careful about the things that lie in our own heart that are causing us to feel resistance. The one thing that, you know, all of us really need to recognize is when you feel a certain way, when somebody's talking, when somebody's saying something, and you feel this feeling rising up, and we all know what it is, that feeling is not from God. Even if what that person is saying is error, and we can sort of justify the feeling we have, that feeling is something that's going to hinder us from ministering to that person, helping the people around him, and also gonna hinder us. When, when, when the enemies of Christ came to him, did they find anything in him? No. No. There was nothing that they could do to injure him. He wasn't, Christ was dead. He had died to self, but self rises up in us. And we have to be careful about that. We should recognize that feeling. When it happens, we should be quiet and listen to what God is trying to teach us. <clears throat> so this is where we are at now. <clears throat> So next, um, next, next week, next Friday, we're going to, and, and I'm going to do the best that I can to try to get my notes together. So I'm going to try to get some decent notes that we can go through and start, start looking at 2030 of what this means symbolically as far as this great reset and how it ties to what's happening now. And it's going to take us some time. Like, I don't, I don't think it's going to be, you know, one or two presentations to do that. And, and that's mostly what this study is going to be, always with reference to this chronological structure that's been given to us. So we're going to keep referring back to this again and again. And, and we don't know what's going to unfold as we continue to study. That is, we might find some things that are quite surprising about what's happening in the world. And the other point that I tried to make clear in the first few presentations was the idea that when we're dealing with the Great Reset, we're looking at the dragon power, the globalists, Egypt, Greece, right? As Adventists, we tend to focus a lot on the papacy or the United States. And those things are both important. All three of them are important in understanding end time prophecy. But to understand what the dragon power is doing um, helps us to understand what the other powers are doing, what's happening in this battle between them, this battle for the supremacy of the world. And um, we have seen, we've experienced the dragon power in the last couple of years, exercising its authority, not just in the United States, but also around the world with this pandemic. And we need to understand it correctly. That is, there's lots of misinformation attached to this that's going to mislead us. And the other thing that we're learning quite clearly is that we're not to be political. This is a very important point. Um, because we can easily get caught up in the politics of the day, rooting for one of the powers to prevail, even though those powers are just as deadly as the other power. Satan is pretty clever on how he distracts us from understanding what he's actually doing.
So any, any final thoughts? I did a lot of talking here. It wasn't as much a study as I wanted, but um, or a discussion. We, we tend to do much better in the morning studies going through things. But is there any comments or thoughts that people have about what we're studying here? It's just interesting to see how all of these patterns are all interrelated. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to me, it's just absolutely mind blowing. Um, that we can connect Millerite history to 457 BC in the way that we did some years ago, but now to see how it connects to our history um, with 9-11 and, uh, and ties us back to all these, these stories. But then how it all comes together at the timing that God has. So he gives us things that, that we need when we need them and not before. And, and I think that, you know, this understanding is something that was given to us to bring this movement together in unity. And that's a difficult thing. So, um, any other thoughts? before we close with prayer. Okay, well, let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we are so thankful for the Sabbath that will be coming soon and um, for the study tomorrow morning. We ask, Lord, that that you can speak to us and bring a conviction and a strength that will help us in the trials that we face as we go through each week, each day. We pray for each person in this movement <clears throat> that we can be witnesses, that we can reveal your character, and that we can come into unity through Christ and not through man's machinery and devices. We pray that you can break our hearts, destroy self, and rebuild and renew us through thy spirit. Be with us throughout this Sabbath. And uh, we pray uh, again for the meetings tomorrow and the contact we have with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Recording stop.